Good afternoon. I got a question for you before we get started. Um, of course, I had to pull out my click click CD and listen to a few jams. Was that you singing the hook on um, "Be About Your Paper"? Always. <laughs> Right on. Well, not, not be about your paper, be about your paper, man. No, that's a guy. That's my cousin, Vinny. Oh, okay. So I'm, I'm singing on one love. Oh. Love. Yeah, that. I'm singing on FedEx. He said he's just a common name ringing. Major factor FedEx. I call one more year than a young nigga hanging his head. I'm the one singing on the, on the hurricane. Hurricane. But you, you can, can call me Slurricane. I'm singing on family. I got my family. I'm, you know what I mean? I can keep going on. Well, so, I sung. Yeah. Uh, you wasn't singing those jams by yourself. I was singing a few of them motherfuckers way over here in Pennsylvania around 1990, <laughs> around 95. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? Um, you know what, sugar? In a uh, minute. Yeah. The um whoever did the album cover for the click, y'all owed him a lot. Which which click? The uh four click album. Okay, the the colorful one with the black and the pink and you know what I'm talking about? Uh mm -mm. not the black, not the black and blue one. The one that it's like a it's a, it's a color scheme in there. It's it's tur it's turquoise and some pink. Mm -hmm. Um Oh, yeah. Um, turquoise and pink. Let me pull it up. I only knew the Click album to have one CD cover. Um, y'all must, y'all might have released. Oh, we have four. Yeah, we have four. We got game related. We got um, that's what I'm saying. You ain't done your research. Nah, <laughs> nah, 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 nah. Yeah, nah. Like, we, we got four of them. We got um, 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 Kanye West. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's definitely game related. It was definitely game related. And, Game related, and it's down and dirty. It's money and muscle, yes. and then it's the best of the quick. So there's four of them. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Money and muscle. It, it was game related. It got the board game, and I see purples, and I yeah. see yeah. Okay. Uh huh. Yeah, that's the one. Whoever did that, those graphics on that CD, they sold the fuck out of that album because we didn't know anything much more than E40. We um, uh, we we had been you know listening to to. 40 CDs for a minute in a major way was a big record that summer and we was going to pretty much give 40 you know a try on whatever he pulled put out but that that CD cover specifically it it, it was something enticing about it straight up yeah. definitely okay. um let's go from yeah. the top though sis why don't you go ahead and tell my uh my listeners who they listening to right now we'll just go ahead and spark it off Sugar. Yeah. I said, go ahead and tell my go ahead and tell my listeners who we who we, who we uh rocking with right now. We go ahead and spark this interview up. I appreciate having you, by the way. Oh, uh, for sure, sugar, sugar tea. Is, I said you the quick. Is that a um? I looked up your name online, and is that your government name, Sugar? Sugar tea is my stage name, and that's my brand. That's who they talking with. No doubt. No uh -huh. doubt. Um, I'd like to know what, what what it was like growing up in a household. It's such a musically inclined household. You had two brothers that were performers. What was it like being Sugar T in, in, in your home? Yeah, I actually have five brothers, and um, all of them are performers. Um, there's a couple of them that were in our group, and then there was one that was originally in our group as a hype man in our dancers. So it was cool. It was uh, unique. You know, and I'm, and uh, it was definitely always never a dull moment. We were uh, not just performers, but we all play instruments too. We grew up in church; that was our original mainstay. Okay. Um, playing instruments, and our families were all musicians. All our aunts and my grandparents, and you know, we all everybody sang and played an instrument. So that was that was mostly what we started off doing as we grew up. My grandfather, my father's a jazz. Uh, the blues and jazz uh, is so uh, master guitarist and singer. My mom, you know, and all my aunts are singers, and they all had groups, you know, the whole nine. So it's kind of a second nature for us all to be around that type of environment. So, 
sound like y'all the Jackson family of the Bay Area. Straight up. <laughs> um, when did you decide that you were going to be an MC? You said you were already, you know, y'all, your first stage was performing in church and things of that nature. Was you rhyming in church? Uh, with the rhyming in church, I was rhyming in church and I was singing in church. Okay. Yeah. At one point I did put out a gospel album, but that was way, way later through the years, a gospel singing and hip hop album. Mm -hmm. <sighs> what year did you um enter the game professionally as Sugar T? I'd say about eighty four. 84? You were Sugar T since 84? Yep. So how long was y'all doing records? We grew up, we grew up, um, like I said, we grew up singing and playing instruments and making music. My uncle produced records before we started producing records. Mm -hmm. Uncle St. Charles. Okay. So, in my, all my parents and everybody were into the music world. So we were playing instruments. Uh, I played the drums and the piano and the guitar. Um, my brother played the drums and Forty played the drums, you know. D Shot was into the drums as well. And we all kind of started developing our skills from the gate. But our brand, our official click brand, where we actually were not called the click, we were actually called MVP, Most Vicious Performers. <laughs> We came in the game as originally a family that had multiple uh, segments uh, of different groups that were our family members, and we created groups out of it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So back in '84, um, back in '84, break dancing was just now coming to a close, and hip hop was taking over. Before, before the hip hop shit, was you was you into the hip uh, break dancing and shit? Was you into that? Um, <laughs> Aspect of b boy. Yeah, most definitely. We would, you know, beatboxing. <laughs> <laughs> we did our beatboxing and we did our break dance and our, you know, cutting up. <laughs> we called it cutting up out here. Uh, many, many, many layers of it, and from all different angles, from the schoolyard to the hood to the stage, actually. And we still do. I still break dance. Right. <laughs> When did y'all start developing a reputation? When did you start feeling a fan base, fanfare? When was the first time you encountered that? Um, I think it started in church. Yeah, that, that was my fan base. I've been singing, like I said, in the choir growing up from the gate, out the gate. Five years old, I was in front of the choir, leading the choir. So I developed a fan base in church first. Um, and I didn't know they were my fans, and I didn't know I was in training, but I was actually in training and developing a fan base. Right. So, uh, you being, you know, go ahead, you being skilled in, in music, 40, he basically was like, I'm going to turn my sister loose on the world sooner or later. Is that how you came to be? Um, well, no, not really. Eventually, uh, it did get to that place, but... Originally, I was singing in church, and I was coached by my aunt. And then, of course, when it came down to performing in the mainstream and building a brand, yes, that's how it worked out. He was like, more so, I'm going to protect my sister from getting herself in some trouble because I was, you know, walking down some different paths. So, mm -hmm. therefore, that was really the purpose of him doing that originally. Right. Mm. Tell me what it was like making that game-related album, because that's what um, that's when you first came across my radar. I probably was about eight, 17 or 18, something like that. And, um, of course, I had heard you on In A Major Way album, but that Click album was a different look coming from the West Coast. I mean, it was other hip-hop groups who had came along with female members. Um, I specifically thought of X-Clan, and I couldn't come up with anybody else after X-Clan. X -Clan. Um, was y'all the first from the West Coast to come with a squad with a female MC and all of that? Okay, we the first to do what? Was y'all the first... Was y'all the first to come with a, a collective with a f featuring a female MC? I know on the East Coast, X-Clan had female MCs in the late 80s. 
and I'm asking, was y'all was was the click? Were you the first on the West Coast? First, the first squad. You know, I'm, I'm thinking we might actually we might actually have been at least as a family member in a group, more so family member, and I'm sure definitely one of the first, if not the first, for sure. Right. Did, mm -hmm. did it take people long to take you serious? You know, of course, when we first hear a female rapper and you were spitting. Um, the, the West Coast female MCs can really get busy. Um, I don't, I, I, I'm serious. I'm not saying that to toot your horn. I didn't particularly take to female rappers after, you know, MC Light and Latifah. But I could listen to Marvelous and Sugar T. I'm no bullshit. Like y'all could really, really go. Was there emphasis placed on writing raps? Was you writing your own rhymes? Like, tell me what went into uh, making you as a package? Because you, you was actually spitting some shit for real. <laughs> Thank you. Um, you know, to be honest with you, at the beginning of my career, I think some people judged me on it. I was, I was spitting. But shoot, I was just having fun. You know what I'm saying? I was bent. I wasn't even like, oh, I'm about to be the toughest MC or the best MC. I was having fun, and I was escaping, you know, from parenting, mm -hmm. uh, partying. You know what I'm saying? It was like a party place. So half of the workers that I wrote, I was bent, to be honest with you. Um, and I really got real serious, you know, after about, probably after about maybe three, three albums. You know, it's when I really started kind of lifting up and said, okay, let me get this, let me take this more serious in terms of, <laughs> you know, trying to position a flow that makes sense and not just having fun and acting a fool on the record. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> was it? What, I don't know if that answered your question. <laughs> was somewhat, somewhat. We're going to go back, go, go a little bit in depth. Was it hard considering that you were so good looking? Did people try to identify you more so as the, you know, the sex kitten of the crew, even though them was your brothers, was was you there as eye candy, or was this really, really? We got an MC, we got a female MC who gonna bring that shit. Yeah, I think it was a combination, um, both. Um, you know, a combination. Um, so your name is Sugar T. Give, give me uh, well. Your um, name is Sugar T. You you curvy. Um, right. <laughs> right. So you know, was was it hard to establish? Yo, take me serious as an MC. I know I'm good looking, but goddamn, I'm rhyming. What's up? Exactly. So it was um it was a it was it was a combination. They always listened to me. Okay. I guess because um I guess because. Um, because what I talked about, they can relate to, you know what I'm saying? Right. So I think being able to relate to, you know, being culture competent and at the same time representing, I was always what you consider game related, you know what I mean? True. I think that kind of made a difference. And then, of course, being able to hang with the fellas and, you know, people who were endorsed by men. Unfortunately, females, they automatically get a different path. So, especially when they can hold their own and when they realize that you can stand alone, too. Right. So I think that had a lot to do with it. Um, and then eventually, I've never really seen them trying to eat me up. Okay. You were a part of on a, one of the early hip-hop indie records, in, indie record labels, Sick With It. What was that like early on, working for self? Um, it was cool, it was different. Um, so, um, it, it was always a, a journey. <laughs> mm -hmm. It was always a journey. Um, always learning something new. You know, you deal with the good, the bad, and the ugly. You deal with the politics, family politics, male politics. Female politics, you know what I mean, from all different angles. Right. Um, you know, but it was uh, enlightening as well. You know, as a as a seed to always know it's about business. You know, um, it's not just something to just have fun and just you know spend your time, especially when you spend the time away from your kids or your family or something productive that you could be doing. You gotta always make something of it. Right. Yeah. 
So you really took that serious as your brother as, as serious as your brother did. I did. Absolutely. That was the whole goal. You know, starting off as an entrepreneur, um, it worked out to where it's, you know, I started off at eight years old with the seeds sold to me by my grandfather, you know, throwing newspapers. We had a newspaper business together. So I was driving him as well as throwing newspapers and he taught me how to wrap it, how to, you know, recognize and remember addresses. Um, and at the same time, you know, about being consistent and showing up. And then from there, you know, I was always into uh, the expansion of a visionary who took care of business. Right. Of course, in transformation of that, I became a mom at an early age. So my welfare check had to be in, you know, at a certain time, every a month, they had to have a, a document that needed to be sent. And I learned about, you know, holding on to things and making copies and tracking stuff, you know, and troubleshooting before the trouble is there. Then, of course, later coming into the understanding of, um, of you know, the music business and trans transforming into a professional versus just somebody that's just figuring it out and trying something to see if it's big. So I've had quite a bit of experiences, even something that I didn't mention, which led me to the book that I wrote called um, Boss Up. It's a book that you can be found on Amazon. It kind of shares some of my experiences as a businesswoman from the gate, which, you know, motivated me and inspired me to create this entrepreneurship experience for people to, one, get a little bit of insight of my own experience as a coming up entrepreneur, as well as, two, you know, tools and principles that they can bring and how it can help them through their journey. Got it. Got it. Mm-hmm. Got it. I, um, I noticed that you, you pursued education heavily after hip-hop. I'm going to get to that. Um, was you around during... The um the recording of the record busted and disgusted. Um, was I around? What was that? Was you around during you know during the recording of the record busted and dusted and disgusted? I think. Yeah, I sang on the record. Okay. Yeah. What was your relationship like with Tupac? It was cool. Yeah, you know the part that says, "Some cold hearted niggas, some cold hearted niggas." That's me. Oh, you on the um? That show the fuck is you too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Damn. What was it like working with him? Um, tell me what it was like your first time encountering him. Well, uh, we more so uh, connected on a personal basis of just you know him being one of the brothers from the area. Right. <clears throat> and then you know I always was more of a oh let me go to Sugar House. I know it's going to be some peace over there and I can breathe and rest. Right. <laughs> and it's going to be some food because she's going to cook for the kids and cook for the house. So I was one of the rest back to him. He'd come over and just, you know, chill. You know what I'm saying? And eventually we did music together. Um, and it was, you know, it was a great experience without, you know, thinking that something was going to happen to him. I wish I really took, really, would have took more advantage of an opportunity to work more with him. But we were able to record a song before he passed that was called um, What Goes Around, Comes Around. Mm-hmm. And so um, that was the last recording that, you know, that we did as a group with him. Um, and that was a, a great experience. But definitely it was a, a very unique opportunity. And at the time, you know, like I said, I met him on a personal basis that was more of a, you know, socially family type of relationship then eventually it turns into more okay let's do some work together right on cool Mm -hmm. did um were you were were you uh were you disturbed by the female hip-hop rappers list that came out this week that me and you that we had an encounter about this list that's how this video that's how this uh interview came into play were you disturbed by by that list One more time. I was disturbed by. Were you disturbed by that female rappers list? Um, you 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 personally DM me and you asked me like, "Yo, why Sugar ain't on the list?" Uh-huh. And um, that yeah, I was I was explaining to you. I didn't I didn't actually um write the list, but I had some gripes with it, and I didn't even know that you weren't on there until you pointed it out, and I felt that was a big big blunder, big blunder, 
And Marvelous definitely didn't belong at number 40-something. That was just crazy. That made no sense. Um, I, <laughs> I identify you. You're hip-hop. Missy Elliott is an entertainer. They had Missy Elliott on the hip-hop list. Um, she does a little bit of both. She dances, she sings, she entertains, but she's not an MC. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and they 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 had her hey. like you know high up on the list. That it was just a yeah. big mess. Yeah, it's pretty political. The way that I ended up seeing the list was um, I ended up seeing it because. People be tagging me when they have these lists up. So right. my fans be like, why she ain't on it? You know? So they'll tag me and say stuff, which is really cool. You know what I mean? Because, first of all, I know I'm not a commercial artist. You know what I mean? I'm not in, in the space of people all day, every day, because I just ain't never lived that kind of a life of just TV being my mainstay. You know what I mean? And media being my mainstay. Um, I've always been able to move around and survive and have the balance of, you know, going between the stage and home and kids and, you know, and family and, you know, real stuff along with every blue moon, you know, the opportunity to, um, to, you know, to keep a tour going and always, you know, move it at a pace that works for me. You know what I mean? Right. So, um, even though I'm celebrating 20 albums today, you know, 30 years later, you know, there was other things that I do too. So unfortunately, those who don't look into their own research and then live off hype, those are the ones that will create those lists and leave people like myself out, you know, not even having enough sense to say, well, Queen Latifah set the record straight because Queen Latifah in 2016, she made it very clear that I was one of the West Coast hip hop pioneers of all time, you know what I'm saying? And she exposed that to the world. So the BH1 endorsed it. So therefore, yeah. for them to do that, um, you know, whether they feel that I'm the best MC or not, I still made made the history, and I'm still moving, and I'm still presenting and pushing. And if they had enough sense to even, you know, look more around, then you know, I feel that there is some politics going on. You know what I'm saying? And that's what they do with the hip hop world is they experience these politics, pick and choose, and have. You know, the females uh, scratching each other's eyeballs out, trying to figure out who's going to be the one that's going to be the chosen one, you know, out of us who are out here, you know, and and make it where uh, their own agenda is being set up um, and, and the men don't stand up for it. You know what I mean? Right. That's what my platform is here for. I ain't going to have that bullshit. I come from that generation of going in the store, seeing a CD on the counter. This is the new joint that's out. Buying it. You know what I'm saying? And you definitely was in rotation. You definitely was in rotation. You was on some of those West Coast compilations and everything. They need to stop that. I bought them CDs. For real. Thank you. Yeah, yeah and it cracked me up, you know, because for them to be... Um, <laughs> For them to, to be like that, it makes them look, you know, really, it's, it's clear that it's some political or some hate going it on. It makes them look ignorant. misinformed. Uh, it makes it makes yeah, them look ignorant. misinformed. Yeah, right. exactly, right. because when you look at the styles that's out today, these are people that's hype, that's on some hype stuff. You look at the styles that are out today, you know, they're not, that's no offense towards the new generation of females, but I spoke on this with Jermaine Dupree, what he was talking about. You know, he said that he can't really choose any females that he really look up to or can put on a chart today because they only talk about one thing. He's right. And they sh he right. I was all, I'm, I'm 100% in his corner because I experienced that. I'm like, um, it was a trip to, 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 to every time you look around, there's an artist um, that, there's an artist that would do it, you know what I mean? Um, that would be, you know, doing the same brand, the same style, and um, <coughs> um, and to be called relevant, I'm still trying to figure out who are the ones that's calling this relevant. Um, the relevant to me is is old that they're considering relevant. These messages that they're putting out, this whole, the only difference is, is that they grind it to the ground. You know what I mean? Um, they talk about it over and over and over, the same thing. So other than that, they're not doing anything new. 
they're doing what we're doing, which makes me very proud, what we did years ago, which makes me very proud that they were able to, you know, pick up, you know, pick up some of the, you know, the, the, the seeds that we, that we sold, me, Foxy Brown, um, you know, and all the ladies in that time. But, to, you know, but for the, those who are making the call of relevance and, you know, who's important, as a female, but who's not, you know, it's pretty obvious that either they're jock, jock droppers, you know, um, or they are trying to put something, an agenda together, or they have not done their full research, or their their full research, or they young. You know what I'm saying? And they don't have enough sense to dig into their history, which you know is really unfair, and it shows the limitations of of what they're about. You know what I mean? Right. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, um. Yeah. I- your, your press kit was very extensive. I'm like, God damn. I, mean, <laughs> I, I needed a little time to process all of that. Um, yeah, you definitely were active uh, outside of music. Tell me about um, this, this degree that you have. Um, which one? Because I have multiple degrees. Well, I have the big one. <laughs> the master's degree, sis. <laughs> All good. Um, so, what it is is, um, I am, um, I started off, of course, with different layers. So, I have a couple of AAs, liberal studies is one of them, business is another. I have a bachelor's in psychology. In between, I have a bunch of different degrees, digital marketing, social media certifications, uh, different type of employment-related, you know, workforce-related um, certifications because of the business that I'm in, helping people um, in transition and uh, position independence for their lives. Um, and then, of course, um, I have a master's degree, two of them, one in supply chain management and one in organizational management while working on a doctor's degree right now. So I could continue to increase, you know, my education and continuously stay in the now uh, what's needed, you know, for as things continue to increase and develop, you know what I mean, to stay innovative and on top of stuff. You just ran off so many accreditations, I don't even know where to attack at. <laughs> I, don't even, I don't even know where to start. <laughs> I don't, I don't know, know where to start, man. Like, like what is um? Let me. Let me when do you? Like when do you? When do you, um, when do you separate? Motivation. When do you separate? Uh-huh. When do you separate from the you know the pursuit of education and accreditations to applying these degrees and turning them you know into lucrative businesses? Well, they work hand in hand. Um, as I continue to slow and have expanded, of course, you start off with one business. I started off in. Um, like I told you, the newspaper business, and then I wanted to sell the newspaper subscriptions, and then I wanted to um, own a clothing store that I ran, uh, co-owning it with my brothers, and then I ended up, you know, building from um, a welfare relationship, starting off with donations, doing hair. I had a mobile hair business, and so I would go, my, my clients were... Those who I knew that got a check every month and needed a babysitter because it was difficult for them to move around to get their hair done. So I became uh, servicing a need and took donations to help me position myself and add to my welfare experience. So, you know, to keep be, you know, continue to grow in that and then in transformation of becoming a successful um, record company, I was coached as a co you know, a collaborative owner of the business, stick to our record label, stick with the records. So I've always taken different forms of experiences and use it as education. Um, and then, of course, coming into, you know, we always have a record label, you know, so putting out independent projects and, you know, establishing other businesses along the way, you know, which um, you haven't seen it in my bio, you know, <laughs> right. The balance is there because each each accreditation goes along with my business entities that allow me to monetize and, and use it, you know, and not just appear to be winging it, um, but also at the same time to be able to stay in front of the game, you know, and uh, make it effective and strategic move. You was 
you was you was pulling up you was you was pulling up with the hair shop sis. Yep. <laughs> what all services could we get? You was pulling up to the curb with it. What all could we get when you pulled up? If we had an appointment, if we was VIP clientele and I paid for the package, what was you coming to do? Braids or weave. I was a mobile weave and braid queen. Okay. And you had the hair on deck, of course. <laughs> yep, I had some on deck and they had some also. Well, I be damned. <laughs> Niggas gonna find a way, man. We can't be stopped. We can't be stopped. I think you're the first person I heard that you you pulled up the whole beauty shop. <laughs> That's yes, dope. I was holding on to one of the flyers that I made. I actually made a flyer on my own at that time, which cracked me up. I think I was only like seventeen, <laughs> and I made up my own flyer. Right. <laughs> That's incredible. Yeah, it was before I knew I would be super famous. It was my own, you know, photos that I used. I don't know how I ch transitioned them. Because at that time, you know, you didn't have like a scanner and, <laughs> and all that kind of stuff to be able to. I don't even remember how I did that, to be honest with you. But I found um, a flyer about maybe three weeks ago and I put it up so I could show it. <laughs> right on. No doubt. <laughs> Do you, uh,. Do you still get a chance? Do y'all get a chance to perform Sprinkle Me? Um, we do sometimes. Yes, we do as much as possible. Was that was that that was your your coming out, right? Not as much as we'd like. I'm talking about that was your debut. That was your that was your debut to the world because we had already seen no. for it. Not at all. Captain Saber Ho, One Love was our debut, and Sugar Daddy, I mean, I'm sorry, um, Billy Badass was a, was a debut. We had um, exposure far before Sprinkle Me. Um, Captain Saber Ho had one goal before he even got on the radio. So we moved around, you know, throughout the state far before, you know, before Sprinkle Me. <laughs> and One Love was a hit song that moved around the country as well. And, um, I got that tattooed on me. <laughs> that's good. I got that tattooed on me. Uh huh. Nas got a one love. Y'all got a one love. Bob Marley got one. We in here. I got one too. Yeah, see, you know what it is. You was, you was in it. <laughs> yeah. Um, do y'all do the uh the legend the legends performances where you know the whole clique shows up? D shot, be legit. Is is it all love there? Is is y'all still performing? We get, we get calls on them. Um, my brother gets most of the calls because his brand is the most visible right now. So he he he's been taking most of those calls. And unfortunately, from time to time, if we're not able to to make it or if we're not specifically asked to be on it, then you know they'll get E forty doing some of the quick hits. Um, pretty much. So we gonna start a protest, man. Y'all ain't gonna keep get away getting away with this. We want everybody. We want the whole clique. Y'all got this is the internet age. Y'all gotta figure something out. That's real. Yeah. So I'm gonna do a quick. Um, uh, I'm I'm working on a brand that we can establish that doesn't only allow. Um, that doesn't allow the politics to to to, to position it. So um. You know, I'm working on that as we speak. What a project would be legit, myself and um, my brother D Shot. So um, we'll be kind of just bringing another element of the clique together. Right. And yeah, get the people so what they we're working want. Working on it now. Right, right, right. Yeah, because right. like I said, if they don't specifically ask for the clique, then Forty takes the calls, his agent takes the calls, and there's other um, ways around. Get out of that. There's other ways around. Get out of there. Um, there's other ways around, um, you know, still getting the benefits of our quick hits. So, um, so people really take advantage of that. <laughs> Did y'all ever get any um, any type of acknowledgement from, from Hurricane? Um, do I ever get any? Uh, you know who keeps the acknowledgement? My fans. Uh huh. Uh, when I'm off, when I'm performing, you know, when I my, when I'm performing, right? I do Hurricane, and I do, you know, I do both hits, and I get a lot of acknowledgement then. Oh. You know, and my gold album is my acknowledgement because it's still growing. So that's that's pretty much you know a proportion of it. 
This was um dang man, this is like monumental. First lady of Bay Area rap. How long did it take you to establish that title? <coughs> How long did it take? Um, well, you know, at the end of the day, the title of which part? Should it be or which part? The first lady of Bay Area rap. <laughs> you know what? Um, shoot. It was established. They established it, to be honest with you. Other people start calling me that. And then eventually I was like, oh, well, I guess I was. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, <laughs> I was a leading lady of hip-hop. So uh, here, you know, in, in the Bay and in Northern California. So they actually created that name for me. The fans and other people who, you know, know about my existence. Right. And they just started calling me First Lady. Word. Mm-hmm. What other um, female MCs have you ever worked with on the West Coast? Um, I've worked with The Conscious Daughters, um, Twelve with Marvelous, Twelve with The Conscious Daughters. Um, I worked with a girl named Pinky when she was out. Okay. Uh, worked with Yo-Yo, Rage, um, The Five Footers. <laughs> God damn! <laughs> you got the rap sheet. That's what I'm talking about. Bring that shit. In. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah, you got that rap sheet. Yeah, and many more. You know. They don't know about the five footers. The five footers. The five footers. That was Warren G's group. Yes, exactly. And Silky, Silky Fine. Exactly. Let's see. I'm well, I'm well read on this West Coast hip hop culture, man. Y'all had that shit in the choke hole. <laughs> yeah, you know, it. had it. You know, y'all had, y'all had it in the choke I'm until it. like, till Biggie and you know Wu Tang and shit like that started to you know take off. We was all listening to E40 and Sibo and shit like that. Just keeping it real. But um, I appreciate your time, Sugar. You got anything going on now? You selling anything? Books? Uh, audio books, merch, any uh, contact information you can leave for people who want to, you know, grab some of your music, any of that. Yeah, I'm on Spotify. Um, all the digital outlets, you know, if you want to catch up to the 20th, my 20 album anniversary release, that's going to be um, a soundtrack for my book. It's called Work It. That's the soundtrack, and the book is um, it's called Your Perfume. A Woman's Guide to Help Us Reinvent Our Brand and Discover a New Sin of Success. That's available for pre sale now on Amazon. It's called Your Perfume. Just put in Your Perfume, Sugar Tea, and you should be able to find it on Amazon. They could also go to my site and purchase my product line, um, sprinkleme.biz. There are various collections there of, um, of beauty, spa, wellness products, as well as other um, products that are distributed through the Sprinkle Me Boutique. Again, sprinkleme.biz. And of course, you can always Google me, sugar-t dot dot net, to learn more and follow me at sugar t. Why? Okay. Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. You've been a great guest, Sugar T. I really, really appreciate the opportunity. This meant a lot to my my resume. No bullshit. <laughs> no bullshit. <laughs> well, thank you. Thanks for you know. Thanks for acknowledging um, my. Uh, <laughs> My vicious, my vicious <laughs> oh, Tell me about Sprinkle Me. Uh, tell me about the, the creation of Sprinkle Me. Did you know? Did y'all know that that was gonna be a, a, a hit like that? Never had a clue. Went in there and run it in twenty minutes, and next thing you know, it was everywhere. Twenty minutes. Twenty minutes. <laughs> oh man. Yep, yep. But I got you know, I could, it's some bangers. There's plenty of hits, but just a lot of them are not exposed. So. Just keep on watching, you know, and um, I look forward to getting you some things to share as we move, move through the process. You yeah. know what I mean? But yeah. again, we're, we're going to be celebrating the 30 year, um, over 30 year, 20 album release. Um, we're going to celebrate that all year. So on this new album, I'll be making a video for every song. The song, like I said, is the 20th anniversary. So it's 
uh, called Working on the Soundtrack, and it has a multiple amount of information, uh, different genres, basically, you know, where you can be, people can experience my 30 year existence and the ride that I've been on through the messages and through the different types of presentations that's on there. Yes. I appreciate you again. Um, <laughs> this is Gully TV. Say Gully TV with me, Sugar. Come, come on, one time. Gully TV. TV. No doubt. <laughs> appreciate your time. Thank you, my Thank brother. you. All right. Bless one.